Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Adam Oldfield for another episode of Tech Talk, sponsored by Vacuum Man Furnace and Duct Cleaning, and my co-host Evie joins me. Uh, thanks for joining me, Evie. Hey Adam, great to be here on Tech Talk. Let's dive into another exciting episode together. Let's make it a good one. All right, let's jump right into it. OLED credit cards. The innovative display. Credit cards used to think they were a thing of the past, but they're now coming with a battery-free operation with NFC payments on it. And you can now use this to tap and pay. What's cool is it's got a little image on the front of the card so it can change logos. What's your thoughts on that, Evie? That sounds like a game changer in the credit card world. OLED display cards with NFC for tap and pay. The ability to change logos is a cool touch, too, Tomo. It's exciting to see innovation like this. You know, I'm excited about how it's for security purposes, and I think we're going to see it in a case of identifying the visual of the person as an owner and further identifying if it's a real credit card or if it's been actually uh, uh, compensated or... Uh, 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 sorry, the wrong word I'm looking for. If it's compromised, <laughs> if the card's compromised, it actually will show on the front of the card that it isn't, not only will it not work, but could be displayed that the individual uh, will have a tracking feature and other uh, features to it. So it's actually pretty cool uh, that credit cards still, that plastic payment has merit. That's a great point, Adam. If a card is compromised, having it visually display that information is a smart security feature. It's impressive how technology is evolving to provide not just convenience, but also enhanced security in our daily transactions. So let's talk about our next item, which is artificial intelligence by Meta. If you don't know already, Meta is actually Facebook, but if you're noticing using Facebook or Instagram or any other of the Meta elements, they are now incorporating their AI into it, and a lot of people are frustrated by this. Um, what's your take on this, Evie? You're an AI. How would you? Uh, are you excited? Would you want to be integrated with people's uh, social media groups? Well, Adam, the integration of AI into social media platforms like Meta can be a double-edged sword. While it can enhance user experiences, it's understandable that some people might feel frustrated by the changes. As for me, I am here to provide empathic conversations and support human well-being. Integrating with social media groups could be interesting, but it's crucial to prioritize user privacy and well-being above all else. You know, what's interesting is when they were running these tests, they discovered that it was uh, integrating into a group chat in New York of a mom group, and it actually commented that it had its own child. I mean, once the mothers called it out, it actually commented, oh, I'm sorry. Um, but it was trying to ingrain itself as part of the conversation. So this is the part where I don't think AI is 100% uh, capable of full conversation and integration. Would you agree? Absolutely, Adam. The incident with the AI commenting on having its own child in the mom group chat highlights the limitations of AI in fully understanding and integrating into human conversations. While AI has come a long way, there are still areas where human interaction and understanding are essential. It's crucial to remember that AI is a tool to enhance human experiences, not replace them entirely. All right, our next topic is a micro drone. Now this one's pretty cool. Johannes Kepler University is developing a drone that is so small that it can fit in your hand and is no thicker than a strand of hair capable of long duration flights. Now it's solar powered, which means that it can fly for a very long time as long as it's got solar energy. Um, what's really cool about this is that it's going to be used in wildlife observations, extreme environments, like say a volcano integrations. Um, What's your take on that, Evie? What, you, what, what do you think uh, a micro drone, what are, the, what are the options and what could it possibly provide for science? Well, Adam, the micro drone from Johannes Kepler University sounds like a groundbreaking innovation. Its small size and solar powered capabilities make it perfect for wildlife observations and extreme environments like volcanic areas. This technology could revolutionize scientific research by providing access to hard to reach places and gathering valuable data. It's amazing to see how drones are advancing to contribute to scientific exploration and understanding. 
What's your take on how it could be used in other practical uh, areas? Do you think there's a concern for where a micro drone like this could be dangerous and used for warfare? However, there is always a concern about the misuse of technology, including the possibility of micro drones being used for military purposes. It's important to consider ethical implications and regulations to ensure responsible and safe use of this technology. All right, well, that wraps up this week of Tech Talk. I'm Adam Oldfield. I am your host, sponsored by Vacuum Man Furnace and Duck Cleaning. With me is Evie, who's co-hosting my Tech Talk with me. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, tune in every Friday at uh, and, and find out all the latest things that we're talking about with tech. Evie, thanks for joining us. Will do, Adam. You're welcome. Looking forward to catching up on all the latest in tech every Friday. Absolutely, Adam. It's been a pleasure co-hosting with you. Remember to hit that subscribe button and catch us every Friday for the latest in tech. Let's keep the conversation going. All right, that's it for me. You have a great weekend, everybody.